What's going on everybody, man here, welcome back to the channel. Damn, that one's sharp. Why does it have to be so hot? Sweating like a pig on my fingertips. Why do I keep sleeping from those goddamn slopers? Great, now I got a split. All stuff many climbers have said or at least heard at some point in their climbing career. I think most of us have realized by now that skin texture, skin quality, skin surface, whatever you want to call it, plays a significant role in rock climbing performance. In fact, one very frequent topic suggestion I got since day one on this channel is skincare. How can one optimize skin texture and recovery and I made videos about that topic. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate and somewhat quantify the impact skin can have on performance which became visible more by accident than intent through structured training and meticulous documentation. To put my findings in a proper context I need to start by quickly providing a timeline of my training of the more recent past. If you find that boring and just care about numbers, feel free to use the provided timestamps. Starting back on the 3rd of January 2021, pretty much half a year ago, when I did the first session of a new hangboarding experiment evolving around repeaters. The individual sessions were highly structured, each hang and each rest exactly timed, obeying my drill sergeant, the stopwatch. The quite arbitrary goal was to be able to complete one routine at 70 kg of training weight without failure. Which took me longer than expected, because during one session only 50% of hangs had to be conducted on the four fingers half crimp, the other 50% on the three finger drag, which is quite a weak grip of mine. While my four fingers half crimp could survive the routine pretty soon, my three finger drag took super long to become fit enough to not fail a single hang, which after many ups and downs, small breaks and motivation deficits finally happened on the 19th of April, almost five months after the start of the experiment, allowing me to finally move on and try something else. After a hangboarding break of around one week, I started a high frequency, low intensity experiment on the 27th of April. I took structuredness and documentation to the next level. I wanted to back up claims about effectiveness afterwards, so I needed proper experimental design. I documented everything in great detail on my Patreon and I made a summary video not too long ago here on the main channel. Again, every hang and every rest was timed and on top of that I chained myself to two sessions per day on average for exactly 30 days, which was a struggle but doable. What made this experiment special compared to the previous repeaters for example were the two identical assessment sessions pre and post experiment whose purpose was to visualize gains and losses on various different holds and grip types. We will take a closer look at those in a second. Following a 24 day break with no hangboarding I now started a new experiment and because the assessment session concept proved worthy I decided to do it again. The pre session is already conducted, the post session not, because the experiment is still running, but that doesn't really matter, analyzing the numbers of the three already conducted assessments is enough to uncover the dramatic impact of skin texture on performance. When comparing assessments 1 and 2, pre and post high frequency experiment, what jumps to the eye is significant gains on the four fingers half crimp, especially on very small edges, which would make sense as I incorporated these holes into my routine. The three finger drag seems to have developed into the opposite direction though. Numbers got significantly worse, especially on bigger holds, although I incorporated this grip type and these holes into my routine as well. Back when I had only these numbers to compare, I concluded that because my previous repeater experiment stimulated my three finger drag so much, my three finger drag must have been exceptionally fit at the start of the high frequency experiment and that new routine was just not able to keep up that fitness. One problem with that theory is, why did my stronger grip, the four fingers half crimp, get even stronger with the same routine, although it got stimulated by the repeater experiment as well? Felt a bit like I was overlooking something. Already while on the high frequency experiment, I noticed that one of its major effects is skin toughness. After around 10 days, I had developed super tough, malleable, almost crystallized, dense fingertips, which would hang even smallest edges without any pain whatsoever. It felt like I could really bite into that stuff. An attentive patron of mine pointed out that my new numbers could also have something to do with skin. Maybe the harder skin let me hang on some holes better than on others. And I found that very plausible, so I mentioned that possibility as well as the three finger drag fitness loss theory 
3 in the summary video. Now that I've conducted another assessment after a 24 day break from hangboarding, I wish I had attributed it all to skin. Let's look at the numbers. Essentially 4 fingers half crimp performance dropped while 3 finger drag went up significantly. How is that possible? If the 3 finger drag fitness loss theory were true, 3 finger drag numbers should have decreased further, at least the low numbers of the second assessment. Instead they went through the roof, one hang was even a definite lifetime record. At the same time the 4 fingers half crimp dropped even below numbers of the first assessment, especially on very small edges. Why would that drop so much, after all it's my stronger grip and general fitness obviously did not suffer. It should be mentioned that throughout all this time, since I started the repeaters, I did outdoor rock climbing at Libitum lead as well as bouldering, as much as I had time and partners for, so even if I had a hangboarding break, I was always doing something. Well, one thing that of course happened after that 24 day hangboarding break was that my skin returned back to somewhat normal. It was still climber skin, but the 6mm micro hang of that third assessment session was very painful again. The fingertip armor I acquired through high frequency hanging seemed to have vanished. It should also be mentioned that I had to conduct the third assessment in very warm conditions because we had a heat wave recently. And that made my skin even softer, definitely softer than it was during the first assessment around two months ago, where it was still a lot cooler. What we see here is the impact of skin texture, not fitness, on various hangs. Small, sharp, painful edges require tough, solid fingertips so that pain is reduced and bite is increased. Tough, solid fingertips are a significant disadvantage though on round, smooth, slopey, greasy, draggy holds and grips. Because friction helps a lot here and friction can hardly be built up between two hard, smooth surfaces. This finding is in congruence with reports of high level athletes who compete indoors on plastic while crushing hard on outdoor rock as well. Often they have to sand down their tough skin from the small sharp outdoor holds to be able to hold those big new school slopey holds of modern competitions. It still amazes me how dramatic the impact of skin is. My assessments display fluctuations of over 100% of hang time on some hangs and only a small part of that can be attributed to fitness changes. There is one particular hold on my hangboard which I could never even lift off on so far until recently when it got warm and my skin got soft enough apparently. I could hang my 1cm radius edge solidly for the first time for 2 seconds. Yeah, lifetime record. What does all that mean for actual rock climbing? Admittedly, hangs on a couple wooden holds are quite abstract, they don't carry over directly to climbing performance, which is a conglomerate of lots of different factors. At the same time we all know that finger strength is one of the most important, if not the most important physical factor of climbing performance, therefore optimizing one's skin conditioning gain to make the most out of one's finger strength appears to make a lot of sense. A Lambo with old hard tires is quite a waste of fun, isn't it? To give concrete examples, attending a modern competition with super tough outdoor skin could be problematic, I'd bring at least some sandpaper. Attacking small, sharp outdoor crimps with soft skin on a warm, moist summer day could be problematic. Could have paid off to throw in at least a couple of skin building high frequency small edge hangs starting 10 days prior to your attack, if you don't have the time to build up skin just by lots of outdoor climbing. Picking a colder day for your attack would have been wiser too, since cold temperatures make the body pull fluids to the inside away from the skin, leaving it drier and significantly harder. Could be a disadvantage though on the greasy slopey compression problem around the corner where tough skin just slips around like there's no tomorrow. Again some sandpaper could help here. After seeing those numbers I think that skin conditioning can be deciding, more often than not. Maybe pay attention to skin if you have an unexpected good or bad day, it might well be one of the most neglected conditioning factors. And that is it for this episode, drop a like and your experience with the subject down below, I would highly appreciate that and special thanks to the Patreon tribe who makes sophisticated experiments and findings like these possible. Keep crushing, I'll see you soon.